Um, okay, so standing wave, this is describing a uh, driver attached to a task string. And I think this is something that you've seen me demonstrate in multiple settings. Um, at the lab for your standing uh, waves lab and the uh, some of the posted lecture videos. So I'm hoping when you see this description that um, that it feels familiar, that it's not something that you have never seen before. <laughs> so the reason it's important that you feel familiar, that it feels like you have seen this before, is uh, when, what it's describing here, when a, the drive is, driver is run at a particular frequency, the day PC vibrate up and down at a large amplitude. This is describing resonance, which is forms when you have standing wave. So you have to start out with an image or a picture or a diagram of standing wave. So here, the types of standing waves that you would have seen are ones that look like this. Um, this is the longest wavelength, the standing wave that you might fit in, fit here. And you know you have to imagine this oscillating up and down over time. And uh, this is one frequency, one. Um, um, one resonance and as you go to higher frequency, you will see something that looks like this. This is the next one. And each time as you are feeding standing wave, basically what you are bound by is the boundary condition that you must have nodes at the end. So there's that. And then you have uh, the next frequency has something that looks like this. And with each higher frequency, what you should be increasing is the number of nodes in between the two endpoint node, end point nodes. Uh, let me just do one more. I think I have color for one more. So the, the frequency higher than this might be something that looks like this. So the one before this said the two nodes, this, or two nodes in between, this says three nodes in between. So this is the image of standing wave that I want you to have. And once you have that, then, um, then you are ready to answer part A, where it asks for the, uh, find the lowest three such frequencies where the tape vibrates up and down at a large amplitude. Now, if you hadn't gone through this trouble of sketching out the standing waves, Here's a big mistake you could be making here. You might be counting each of these as one, two, three, and then call that done. But when you draw the diagram, I hope you realize that one is fine. And with one, the, where the location of tape is, you have an antinode, so it should be vibrating a lot. And three is also fine. But when you look at number two, that's not going to result in the tape vibrating a lot because it happens to be at a node, not an antinode. So two is not part of the lowest, uh, three lowest frequency. You actually have to go one more harmonic above the fourth harmonic and go all the way up to uh, fifth harmonic. So there's going to be a a fifth harmonic where you will have an antinode at this location and that the one, three, five will be the lowest three such frequencies where the tape vibrates up and down at a large amplitude. So, um, you, so the, you need to draw this uh, figure so that you can come to that realization. Once you do, then the rest of the question is relatively easy. So you have to write down the expression for the wavelength. Uh, let's see, I think you are given the uh, length of the string. You have the length of two meters. Let me call that L. Then the, from those pictures that you have drawn, the relationship between the wavelength and the length is that the first wavelength, lambda one, is a double the length of the string. Uh, the second wavelength uh, wait, wait, uh, but the second, but it's actually corresponding to the three here. So it's going to be, let me just label the lambda three so that I don't confuse myself. So it's this one here. So I'm feeding uh, one whole wavelength plus 
uh, half within the length. So, um, so the, uh, let's see, so the expression I'm coming from is the entire length is um, three quarters of the length. <laughs> so so uh, three quarters of the wavelength. So solving this for wavelength, it's a 2L over 3. And I hope you are beginning to identify a pattern here. This is 12 over 1. Uh, 12 over 3. So the fifth one, lambda 5, will be 2L over 5. And um, if that, um, this is probably a good point to just to work out the numbers. So the wavelength for the first one will be 4 meters. The third one, which is the second one, will be 4 thirds or 1.33 meters. Wavelength for the fifth one will be 4 divided by 5 or uh, 0 0.8 meters. So these are the wavelength. And it's asking for frequency. For frequency, you have this relationship that wave speed is frequency times wavelength or flipping that around, that um, frequency is wave speed divided by wavelength. If you want to make sure that you didn't make mistakes, write down the units, meters per second, meters. So you get one over second, which is correct unit for frequency. Um, so now I can write down the three frequencies, F1, F3, and F5. F1 is um, 10 divided by 4, or 2.5 hertz. And F3, it should be three times that, um, or you know, 10 divided by 1.33. Do that on your calculator. You should get 7.5 hertz. F5, um, 10 divided by 0 0.8. Do that on your calculator. You should get 12.5 hertz. So those are the three lowest frequencies, which results in the tape being placed at the location of an antinode. Okay, let's keep going. Question, uh, part B, consider the second frequency you found in A, the standing uh, wave can be described by a single function of position and time. Uh, write down this function with correct numerical coefficients. All right, high difference between peak, uh, difference between peak and the trough of the standing wave is 20 centimeters. Okay, uh, let me draw, uh, start out with a picture so that I have, um, I don't make any mistake in writing down that function. So let me call this x is equal to zero. This is gonna be x equal to L. And the second frequency, that's the one with the two nodes in between. So it's going to look something like this. And you know, I can even say that this is the shape of the function as a function of x at time equals zero. So it's giving me height difference between peak and the trough. So it's telling me that this distance here is 20 centimeters which means, so um, I hope you remember uh, from, I can no, reading textbook, the mathematical representation of the wave, that this is going to be described by some amplitude times a uh, trigonometric, product of two trigonometric functions. And this amplitude actually represents this maximum displacement from the equilibrium. So this is not going to be 20 centimeters, but it's gonna be 20 centimeters divided by, by two. So I'll have to reflect that when I write that down. Let me just put this up here so that, um, so I'll make sure that's uh, represented when I write that. And for the trig functions, it's going to be a product of, um, uh, trig function of omega t and trig function of um, uh, kx, wave number times the position. So um, 
I think for trig function of omega t, my life is a lot easier if I just make it cosine of omega t. That way, when time is equal to zero, then this is the kind of snapshot I can expect to see. Um, because cosine of omega t is equal to one when t is equal to zero. And uh, the, the thing as a function of position, that's going to, um, I have to be, this is where I have to be careful to match the shape I see here. So I have zero at x equals zero and another zero at x equals L. So this will have to be sine of uh, kx. If uh, this is cosine, that, that makes no sense at all. It has to be sine. So, all right, I have that. And um, now I feel like for full credit, I have to write out what omega and uh, k is because right now, so I can write this down so far. I can say that this function is 10 centimeter as the amplitude and I have cosine of, I need, um, yeah, correct numerical coefficient. And omega is, it's a symbol, it's not a number. It's one of the few cases where I'm actually asking for a number. So this is where you have to remember that angular frequency omega is two pi times frequency. So you are working with a frequency of 7.5 Hertz. So that omega is going to be two pi times 7.5 Hertz. Okay, the times time, so that's done. Times sine of kx. And this is where you have to remember that wave number k is related to wavelength this way. Two pi divided by wavelength. So we worked out the wavelength before, it's 1.33 meters. So this should be two pi divided by 1.33 meters. So, uh, times, uh, let me do this in color, or uh, consistent color. So cosine times sine of two, two pi divided by 1.33 meters X. So that's it. That's uh, the mathematical representation of the standing wave with the correct numerical coefficient for the particular resonance that I'm being asked to choose. Okay, part C. Consider the function you found in B. The, uh, so let me write down a version of that. F uh, uh, of xt is equal to, I think I remember most of the numbers. 10 centimeter times cosine of two pi times 7.5 hertz t times sine of 2 pi over 1.33 meters x. Okay, that, it can be described as a superposition of two traveling waves, um, g of um, x minus vt and h of x minus vt find the mathematical expression of these two traveling waves with the correct numerical coefficients and units. Uh, and a good chunk of it is you remembering the derivation for this. And um, you have lecture videos where I did this derivation. Um, and I guess um, from remembering the derivation, if you remember this much that then it's probably close enough to full credit for this particular question. Because to do, be able to do more, it um, takes a little more work. So basically writing down G of X plus minus VT would be, it should involve half of this amplitude because when you add it to H, the amplitude doubles. So this should be five centimeter times and it's going to be traveling periodic wave. So I'm going to pick one that travels to the, in the positive direction for G. So it's going to be, um, <laughs> let me do the cosine first. Cosine of um, X minus VT. 
So k times x minus vt, and you can plug in the numbers, k from earlier, uh, that's 2 pi 1.33, and v as, uh, which was given as, uh, given as 10 meters per second. Um, so, so you can do that, wave traveling to the right, that's one of the two components, and h of x minus x plus vt, wave traveling to the left, uh, which also has half the amplitude times cosine of k times x plus vt. Now, um, one thing that I hope uh, uh, bothered you as you're writing this down is you actually have different choices you could make. Uh, this didn't have to be cosine. This could have been sine. Um, and this amplitude here, it didn't have to be plus. It could have been minus. So how do you make all these choices? Um, and this is where you actually do have to kind of do the bonus part to figure out which of these possible choices lead to the fully correct answer as far as this mathematical choice or rep representation goes. Because frankly, the choices you have here, it matches up with the fact that this could have been sine and this could have been cosine. So uh, the only way to kind of get at what actually matches up is to go through the math. And I think the ones I picked here actually don't match correctly. So, um, so really the real only way to do this correctly, correctly is to do this by trial and error. There are really four things you can try and um, one of those four things will lead to the uh, correct expression. And I think uh, um, the thing that's uh, guiding me here is that this uh, co product of cosine and sine, you only really get that out of the sine angle addition formula. Sine of alpha plus minus beta is equal to sine alpha um, times cosine beta plus minus uh, sine beta cosine alpha. So, um, that's what guides me here, and I want to end up with a sine alpha here and cosine beta there. So uh, what I think will really work is sine. So let me write down what I think will actually work and then uh, carry out the algebra to demonstrate that it actually does work. G of x minus vt is five plus five centimeter times sine of, so what this would be is kx minus omega t, and omega is really equal to k times v. You can demonstrate that. Um, and h of x plus vt is equal to five centimeters times sine of kx plus omega t. So this is what I think will work. Let's go through the calculation to see if they actually do work. So um, what I am proposing as something that combines into f of x t is g of x minus v t plus h of x plus v t. Oops. Or uh, writing this out, uh, or and factoring out five centimeters, five centimeter times sine of kx minus omega t plus sine of kx plus omega t. Um, use the angle addition formula to expand out each of these terms, then this is what you end up with. 
So, so again, still five centimeters times. Expanding out the first term, I get sine of kx cosine of omega t minus sine of omega t times cosine of kx plus expand out the second term sine of kx times cosine of omega t plus sine of omega t times cosine of kx. So you see the cancellations. This is what I was looking for from the beginning. This minus term cancels out this positive term. So, and these two terms are identical. So you have factor of two in front of you and you end with um, five times two or 10 centimeters times sine of kx, which is two pi over 1.33 meters x times cosine of omega t, which is cosine of two pi times 7.5 parts. So, um, so yeah, it, it, uh, that's uh, um, the mathematical, um, that, that's the mathematical expression. And this uh, thing I did below the purple line is the bonus part that illustrates that um, the sum of these two is equivalent to uh, what we have f of uh, uh, x and t. So, yeah, I forget if uh, someone didn't get all this, if I would have given full credit or, or what I have here would have been four out of five. Probably was four out of five if you mixed up cosine and sine. Yeah. So uh, yeah, what I say bonus question here, it's not, I mean, it's not as though there's extra credit, but sometimes doing the bonus part will help you figure out if you made mistakes earlier.